Okay, uh, some parts came in so I can continue. Um, been doing a little paint work in the meantime and whatnot. Um, tires came in too. I'll talk about those later. Uh, let's see. So, um, ball studs, that was the big issue. Um, here's a set of uh, turnbuckles that should fit. Um, they seem to come in the right sizes. Um, and there it's J Concepts product. It's uh, made of titanium and fits RC10 Team Car, RC10 Worlds. So those are variants on the original gold pan, but they include the same parts. So everything should fit just fine. There is uh, somebody on eBay that makes um, a copy of uh, this uh, set of um, steering arms that uh, uses ball bearings. They're made out of aluminum. Um, they're in the $30, $35 range. I ordered a couple of sets, one for the truck, one for the buggy. I don't know if they're gonna get, arrive in time for the race. Uh, because they're coming uh, from outside the country, but uh, we'll see. Um, you know, these will work okay, uh, but um, they probably have a lot of flex because of the type of plastic they're made out of. So we'll see how they work, and um, I'm going to set them up, you know, right off the bat anyway. I'm not going to wait for those parts to come in. If they do come in, great. If not, you know, oh well. Anyway, um, uh, Associated uh, has five millimeter ball studs um, and they are supposed to be of the right size. I tested them with the, um, uh, a set of, uh, oh, one of these. I've got a couple of packs of these. Um, this is an RPM product. It is the 440 size, so I know these work. Um, the five millimeter probably refers to the overall length of the ball stud. Um, it certainly isn't the width of the, uh, the, the ball at the end itself, the knuckle, if you will. Um, so uh, these come in packs of 12, so you need at least one pack. I rec recommend buying two packs at least per vehicle because you may need spares. Um, these also have an Allen head hole at the top as opposed to the wrench fitting at the base. That makes them a little easier to install. Uh, also to remove and move around the car if you need to. Um, I, since I have extras of these, I'm going to try drilling out a hole at the top. Um, I'll do that from the inside to avoid flash and then use a body reamer to try to smooth the hole out and see if that um, if that's workable uh, without changing the performance of the uh, the cup itself um, because uh, most cups these days come with a hole in the top uh, because most uh, ball studs have an allen fitting and uh, that does make them a lot easier to to use because every time you pop these things on and off uh, you loosen them just a little bit and after they get popped on and off a number of times, they become loose to the point where they develop a little bit of slack and they also pop off much more easily. And uh, you don't want them coming off during a race because uh, you know the, the corner marker guys are there to flip your car over um, if it turns over, if it gets stuck or up on top of the rails. Uh, they're there to get it back on the track for you, but they're not going to fix your car. So if a ball link pops off and that's it for you, your race is over. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's one of the main reasons I'm going through all these machinations to, uh, to make sure that these linkages are correct and fit properly. Um, and I'm getting rid of those uh, stock ball cups because they are terrible. Um, 
I, I don't know why Associated even packs those with these anymore, why they haven't upgraded them um, internally, uh, made a better product there because they're garbage. I mean, literally don't waste your time. Um, you should uh, uh, you should be able to adjust a turnbuckle um, with the, you know, that's why they have these little wrench fittings in the middle. If you can't, if these aren't, you know, stiff, sturdy enough that you can't turn a turnbuckle wrench without popping the ball cup off of the ball stud, the, that ball cup is no good. It's not going to hold up under race conditions. You're going to have your wheels coming off, your steering linkages popping off, and your your car is going to be a joke. And I mean, those are the those are critical components. Um, you know, it, if your kingpins were constantly coming off during a race, you would be very upset with the engineering of the vehicle. Um, you know, so these things shouldn't be any different. And the fact that Associated continues to pack those that 1970s garbage. I mean, they were bad back then. Uh, everybody in the, not back then was upgrading to these RPM cups. Um, you know, our, these were airplane products and RPM saw the need and immediately started packaging these things up in a shorter length. People were buying the longer versions and cutting them to size and doing anything they could to get rid of those lousy ball cups. And Associated never addressed the issue, even way back then. Um, they addressed all kinds of other flaws in the cars and engineering issues, and they never did the number one most basic thing. And I don't know why, but what do you do? Anyway, you replace them. Uh, this is just a little thing I saw that um, I thought I would get and uh, try it out on this car. I'm going to go ahead and open one up. I'm going to put one on each of these cars. And I got also got one for the four-wheel drive. I may try them out on other vehicles also. They look pretty handy. Um, it's a little fan shroud. And it bolts to two of the fan uh, bolts. Most fans, you know, are a square. They have four holes. So you normally use two of those to mount the fan somewhere. And this helps direct air from the fan over and around the motor uh, instead of just letting it, you know, distribute around the inside of the car. Um, this helps keep that air flowing uh directly over and around the motor where it should go. It's a little 3D printed product. Um, you know, they're probably not that durable. I would not uh, recommend like trying to zip tie this portion to the motor or something like that. It probably won't hold up, but uh, you know, just bolt it to the fan and uh, place it so it's close to the motor housing itself. Uh, I don't have them a motor can within reach but let's just say this is the motor you want to you know place it like somewhere like this so that it helps direct the air around and over the motor um, and you'll see me put this into use later it's uh, I got this at a main it's a one-up racing product uh, part number one nine zero seven three five it's a 30 millimeter uh, RC 10 b7 fitment um, probably works on you know numerous other rc cars because it bolts to the fan not to the car itself so so onward um some aluminum bolts um use these wherever i need them um for the differential um um, I hate building the little thrust bearings. Um, they're just a pain. Uh, and I've got big fingers. It's kind of a nightmare. 
Um, so I like to use these little uh, thrust bearing cages. Um, let me hold this up for the camera close. Um, all this is is a convenience. There's no performance benefit here. It just, I don't have to worry about the uh, bearings getting loose on me while I'm trying to assemble the, uh, the thrust portion of the, uh, of the differential. Um, it's just, there's two washers that have kind of a groove in them. And then the bearings are held in this little cage here. You grease it up and uh, clamp this little cage in between these two cupped washers. That's all there is to it. It, uh, it doesn't provide any performance. It's just convenience. They are a ceramic bearing. They are probably a little smoother than the stock bearing. Um, but again, I don't, I don't think that that provides any kind of, uh, any, you know, real performance, uh, advantage. Um, these are a set of three 32nd ceramic differential balls. Um, they came up in my search as I was going, uh, looking for these and I figured, you know, why not? They're not very expensive. I think they're like 10 or $12. Um, they are going to be a little smoother than the standard ball bearings, steel ball bearings, because they're, um, Ceramic bearings uh, are precise to an incredible degree of accuracy. Um, it's on the in the realm of uh, you know like space shuttle technology accuracy, um, just because of the way they're made. So uh, anytime you can get ceramic bearings, you know go for it. Um, as far as kit bearings, they tend to be much more expensive. Let's say uh, if I was buying a set of bearings for the entire car, uh, which I did, I got bearings for all of these cars, just standard bearings. They're in the realm of like $35 for a kit. Uh, that includes transmission, front and rear wheels or hubs, depending on where the bearings are. Um, and they would also, if, if there was steering bearings, you would have bearings there. Um, those kits, like I said, around $35, $40. If those were ceramic bearings, they could be as high as $150 for a set. Um, that's how much more expensive those bearings are when you're going for a, a full set of ceramic bearings. Um, and I don't know if they're worth it or not. They are definitely smoother running. Um, I've you know built up all-wheel drive cars where you can you know, spin a wheel with the car, you know, elevated and the motor not attached and the drivetrain just rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls. Now, you know, reducing friction um, at the very least is going to reduce the amount of uh, torque needed to, you know, move the drivetrain. There probably is a performance gain. I don't think it's going to gain anything as far as top speed goes. It might accelerate a little faster and decelerate a little quicker, um, but it's probably more of a longevity advantage. Um, and there may be a slight speed advantage, at least as far as acceleration goes. Um, I've never you know, built two identical kits and run them side by side, one with ceramic and one with standard bearing. So I, I can't speak to what the real advantage is there, but it's a lot of money. So, something to think about um, where to put your dollars. It might be, you might be better off buying a couple of different sets of tires. So you've got a couple of um, options as far as tread patterns and compounds to play with uh, versus getting ceramic bearings. It depends on your budget. Uh, last but not least, um, I want, I was out of some grease. Uh, this is a differential lube. Um, it's uh, team associated, uh, stealth differential grease. And, uh, I'm a fan of the green slime. I've been using it for years. It's a team associated product. Uh, this is for shocks. Um, you use it on the seals. Um, I've, I don't, I can't speak to its performance other than the fact that I've been using it for years. I've never had problems with my shocks leaking. Um, and, uh, 
I've never had issues with my shocks binding up because the uh, seals were swelling because I was using the wrong grease. So that's the main thing this stuff is supposed to do. It's supposed to lubricate your seals and not cause the seals to swell uh, and, and bind. Some lubricants will do that. So if you take the wrong type of grease and you put it on your shock seals, your the silicone seals can swell up and then they'll bind up against the shock shaft and the shaft won't move as smoothly and your it'll degrade the performance of your shock absorbers and um <clears throat> you know these cars may be toys but they are very precise cars at the same time and when you're competing um every little bit counts and uh, when you're trying to make these cars perform at a high level um, ev everything matters and so you have to you have to take it seriously because if your shocks are out of balance in comparison to each other left to right um, that's going to affect how the car handles and it can be very dramatic you your car can be atrocious to drive and you're wondering why and you know, you've done basic tuning things and you just don't, you can't figure out the problem. And it can be because your shock, one of your shocks is sticking. Uh, it's not rebounding properly. Um, all kinds of little things that you disregard as not being important can really come and bite you. So, you know, start with the small stuff, worry about the details, and then the big stuff becomes a lot easier to to you know deal with later um okay i uh, wanted to move on to some other things that you're going to want to get um this applies to both of these vehicles there's not a lot of information on setup there may be on other boards um i just did a very cursory search these are the two setup sheets i found off of um uh one of them i found on team associated's website one of them I found on Pettit R C P E T I T R C dot com. Uh, it's a great resource. Google it up. Um, I'll try to put some links in the descriptions on these videos uh, to some resources if I can. Um, I just uh, printed a few of these out. Um, you can get the blank setup sheets. Uh, off of uh, Team Associated's website. Just look up the vehicle and then on the left hand side there are, is a link for manuals and manuals and documents or manuals and setup something like that. Uh, but it says manuals and something and that's where you're going to find these. They're downloadable usually as PDFs and then you can print them uh, I highly recommend uh, using a laser printer because if you print them with a, um, a uh, an inkjet, uh, you get one bit of moisture on them and they become unreadable. Um, if you don't have a laser, uh, go down to like a Kinko's or something and ask them to print out five or ten for you. Uh, bring them on a, a disc um, or a, a thumb drive or something and uh, they'll they'll be happy to print them up for you for a very nominal fee. Um, but uh, get one copy of the, uh, of the ones that are already done um, as a reference. So you've got these to kind of tune from, get a basic setup going, um, and then get multiple copies of the blank ones for yourself to fill out um and then change during testing and you know you might want to just get a bunch of them get like 10 or 20 even because every time you make major changes like you go and test for a day at the track you want to make you know changes that you make you want to make small incremental changes and you want to do them one at a time you don't want to make like 10 different changes like i'm going to change the front camber and i'm going to change the back toe and i'm going to change the shock fluid and then you have no idea why the car is handling different or where um, because you, you made a, you know, four to three, four different changes. Um, do one thing, see what the, how the car handles, you know, pull it back off the track. If it didn't handle better, back that change off and 
try something different. And there are some very good references on how to get um, the performance out of your RC car. Uh, you know, first you need to learn terminology. You need to learn um, the terminology of cars, uh, oversteer, understeer, camber, positive and negative camber, uh, caster. And then you need to learn what those mean and what they do to the vehicle. Um, because otherwise you're going to be reading and you're not going to understand what, it, what these words mean. If you don't understand what they mean, how it applies to the vehicle, it, it's not going to make sense. So, um, take some time to really learn. If you really want to get fast, you want to be a good RC driver. It's, it's not all in the stick. You know, a, a great driver cannot drive a crappy car fast. Um, they may be able to drive it faster than you, but a bad car is a bad car, no matter what. Um, I've got a couple of good books and, or references. And again, I will try to either, uh, show them to you somewhere in this series, um, or at least leave some links. Um, if you just Google uh, RC car tuning, RC car handling, um, how to set up an RC car, things like that, um, you'll find YouTube videos, you'll find uh, articles, all kinds of stuff. Some of them are good, some of them are questionable, um, but you'll still learn. And that's, you know, it takes time you know, uh, if it's not, you know, a book written by someone reputable, take everything with a grain of salt, um, but it, absorb it and um, try it. And if you, if it doesn't make your car go faster, um, toss it. And, uh, you know, at least you learned something that, you know, didn't work for you. Um, another thing, Learn to drive slowly first. Don't go out and just hammer the throttle. Go to the track and drive with your fingertip on the throttle. Um, just easy, Do learn to do consistent laps. If you can't get around the track five or six times without crashing, at all, not once. You can't tell what the car is doing. You can't tune a vehicle. You need to be able to go around the track five or six times, watching the car, seeing what it's doing, left turns versus right turns, and getting the feel for it, because you're not sitting in it. You gotta be able to observe it. And then you can start worrying about going fast, because if you can't, if you watch the guys who, who win races, they don't crash. They don't, you know, go door to door with people. Rubbing it, racing is not rubbing. Racing is doing a consistent lap again and again and again and again. Um, I'm not the world's greatest racer. When I was like 22 years old, I went to an oval race once and I won by 14 laps. Nobody knew that I was that far ahead. It was 12 scale carpet racing. Not really my genre. I like road racing. I like lefts and rights, but I went anyway. And little Can-Am cars, a couple of people had different style bodies. It was kind of a, just an open race. Um, my car wasn't any faster than anyone else's. Um, I hadn't had a lot of time to really set it up. They were just pan cars. I stayed away from everybody else. I didn't bang up against people. I, I just went wide in the turns, you know, stay to the outside on the straights, come in across, you know, the, you know, the center of the apex, come back out again and just did consistent laps, just lap after lap after lap. I think I, I think I've, I may have gotten out of control once or twice, but I just did consistent laps, stayed out of trouble, 
ran my own race. Other people were banging into each other, trying to get, you know, one ahead of each other, racing with each other as opposed to just racing. And at the end of the race, they put up the timing sheet. I had won and I had won by 14 laps. And, and everyone was shocked. It's like, how did this guy get 14 laps on everybody else? And it's like, because I didn't race with everybody else. I just raced by myself. I stayed out of it. And because no one was calling the race, no one was on a mic, you know, going, oh, this person's this far ahead or that far ahead. So nobody knew. Um, that's how you go fast, consistency. And until you can run, you know, consistently without crashing, you can't tell what your car is doing. You can't tune your car. And so that's what you need to do is get decent enough at driving any car. So that that's why I, I drive a bunch of cars. That's why I have my mini Z track. I play with all kinds of RC cars. So I get stick time. The more you drive RC cars, the better in general you get at it, the better you are, the more you're used to it. Having that perspective, you know, when the car's coming at you, left is right, right is left. A lot of people have a hard time with that, making that adjustment. And you have to do it spot on. It, it's got to be second nature. It can't be something you think about. Um, you know, when the car's going one way, right is left, left is right. When the car's going the other way, it's the opposite. And you have to almost like be in the vehicle with your stick. You know, you can't be thinking, okay, if I turn the stick this way, the car goes which way, you know? It, it's, you know, that that's something that you only get with time driving RC cars. So, um, you know, develop that skill and, and then, you know, speed will come with time. It comes with practice. It comes with learning the car. It comes with learning what cars do, how cars work, and then learning to tune. So that's... That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, that was enough of a lecture. I hope you guys got something out of that. Um, sorry if I was long-winded. Some people like when I, you know, give these talks. Some people complain that I talk too much. So I'm going to do what I do. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, fast forward through it. So I already talked about turnbuckles in a previous video. Um, you know, why the mark is there, which direction it goes, um, why they should point all in one direction. So I'm going to go ahead and build up all these turnbuckles with the, uh, with the ball cups. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to do that on camera because again, I already talked about it and showed the basic process. Uh, and it's just boring for you guys to watch me, you know, you know, showing you how to build one turnbuckle is enough. Watching, watching me build up, you know, eight turnbuckles has got to be, you know, like pulling teeth. So I'm going to go ahead, turn the camera off and, uh, put together all the turnbuckles for the car and, uh, come back at it.